it's time to play. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 SNL game show parodies. It's time to play America's sweetest game show. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the funniest sketches from Saturday Night Live that utilize a game show format. Number 10, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Steve Harvey. The volcano known as... Oh, yeah. Keenan Thompson is an SNL game show MVP, and his Steve Harvey impression is among his best. Imagining him as a bumbling oaf, he mispronounces and misunderstands every question he reads to various confused contestants. This spice, popular on Italian dishes, is from the mint family. Is it A, origami? B, Brazil? C, horseradishes? Or D, Paparicans. <laughs> I love Paparicans. <laughs> My makeup lady is half Paparican. The earnestness with which he progresses through the questions, despite the clearly unfair misreading, is absolutely ludicrous. And things appear to boil over when host Gabare Sidibate decides to take matters into her own hands. Literally. <laughs> the best part about the sketch is that it was inspired by Harvey's almost equally ridiculous real life run as a host, which is also worth having a laugh at. Who is Irve? village heads. Who the hell are they? Who you want me to say? Hold on. Number nine, real quotes. He manages a blockbuster in Baltimore, Maryland, Sam Jefferson. In this fictitious game show, players must finish famous movie quotes. Unfortunately, Charles Barkley's blockbuster manager and Kristen Wiig's strange Rebecca are absolutely clueless. Barkley has little understanding of how the game is played, while Wig goes off on long and random tangents. You can't handle your liquor. And if you don't leave me and my girlfriends alone, I'm going to have a word with the management, Buster Brown. <laughs> Incorrect. Bill Hader, to no one's surprise, hosts the show as the straight man to their bizarrely inept participants. If you build it, we will knock it down. The questions are essentially akin to playing a game of seen it, but much easier. Since these quotes are probably common knowledge to even the most casual moviegoer, the brainlessness of the characters is amped up to the max, to wonderful effect. I see blank people. Two people, you and Rebecca. Number eight, Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney. It's time for We all have a handful of celebrities that we mix up with others, but what if you were challenged to differentiate them? Dylan McDermott of American Horror Story and Dermot Mulroney of My Best Friend's Wedding are two similar looking and similar named actors, and the contestants are baffled trying to discern which is which. You put a bigger space between the names, <laughs> so, so, so we know when the first name ends and the second name begins. The host, who possesses Bill Hader's impeccable comic timing, is confused by the nonsensical premise further complicating things by confusing other films. Dermot Mulroney is the one that's in The Truth About Cats and Dogs. Okay. Sorry. Must Love Dogs with Ashley Judd. Okay. With Diane Lane. The show gets really crazy when Dermot Mulroney himself makes a cameo. And even he is unsure of which person he is. But you're Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Number seven, what's wrong with Tanya? Time to play. What's wrong with Tanya? Anyone who's ever caught a glimpse of a Lifetime original movie can understand exactly how melodramatic and ridiculous they can be. The funny ladies take center stage in this game show, in which three mothers have to figure out what's wrong with daughter Tanya. Tanya! Your English teacher caught you cheating, so he made you take naked pictures, and now they're online, and it's given you an eating disorder, and also you can't read. <laughs> There's a joke packed into just about every moment, all of which poke fun at Lifetime. It's a perfect sketch for host Anna Faris, who made a name for herself with her dramatic hilarity in the Scary Movie series, a talent she falls back on here. Whatever happened to Tanya? She died. The sketch feels meticulously researched, and it's even more rewarding to find out that Kristen Wiig later made a Lifetime movie herself with Will Ferrell. Captain Robert Benson, I am getting in this boat! Number six, Game of Game of Thrones. Game of Game of Thrones! Zach Galifianakis brings his trademark kookiness as a Game of Thrones superfan competing in a quiz show about the hit show. Well, mostly about the hit show. Host OJ Sampson gives the poor dragon-clad dude questions that aren't even related to Westeros. What is the capital of Wisconsin? 
Oh, I, I thought this was going to be a, a Game of Thrones ge geography. The finale is a torture so cruel that only Cersei could have thought it up, as Nikolai Coster Waldau makes a cameo only to embarrass the contestant. What is today's date? Okay, I know we're in the 2000s. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. It's a fun watch whether you can relate to the Game of Thrones fanatics or Bill Hader's clearly annoyed host. After all, when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or get horribly humiliated. See you next week on another... Game of Thrones! Game, 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 game of Thrones! Number 5. Meet Your Second Wife When Tina Fey and Amy Poehler combine forces, the laughs could almost bring Studio 8H crumbling down. The duo returned to SNL and premiered this gem of a sketch, wherein they hosted a show that introduces married men to their future spouses. Wait, I'm sorry, what is this show now? It's obviously an awkward subject, what with the current wives in the audience, made even more uncomfortable by the fact that all of the future wives are very young. Okay, Steve, let's meet your second wife. <laughs> Faye and Polar's glee at the contestants' obvious discomfort raises the comedy, as does the surreal nature of the show itself. The cherry on top is the final gag, that the show itself will be responsible for the death of one current wife. I am not leaving Elaine. You're right, you won't. Sadly, Elaine will pass away in a tragic kayaking accident. <laughs> what? Number 4. Secret Word It's time to play the game the stars play! Secret Word! If you can't tell by now, Kristen Wiig is one of SNL's all-time greats. Mindy Grayson continually participates on Secret Word, despite clearly having a poor grasp of the rules. Hey, I agree. Her flamboyant theater actress ranks among Wiig's best characters, always breaking the cardinal rule of the game by outright stating the secret word. I put my hand on my horn and I honk it. That was it, Mindy. You said the secret word. The sketch rises above its seemingly single-joke premise with Wig's consistently dynamic performance, as well as a slew of peculiar, one-off characters that compete against Mindy. It's sketches like these that exemplify why Wig and Bill Hader received Emmy nominations for their time on the show, while also providing showcases for various hosts. Mindy, uh, you said the secret word. Yes, I did. I did. It's the actress in me. I, I see a word and I bring it to life. Number 3. Celebrity Family Feud Here's your host! Steve Harvey! Kenan Thompson's Steve Harvey returns as host in this parody of real-life celebrity family feud. Allowing the cast to pick and choose their best impressions gives all the cast members time to shine, with Jay Farrow and Kate McKinnon always being particularly memorable. I want a MAFTA. That's a BAFTA they give on the moon. The political edition of the sketch stands out as having some of the best impersonations, including guest Daryl Hammond as Bill Clinton, and Larry David as Bernie Sanders. It's one of the best sources of celebrity imitations on the series, allowing for some of the most absurdly comical moments of recent seasons. That's a stupid ass question, and I hope you burn in hell! Number 2. Japanese Game Show a sketch like this, with white actors playing Japanese characters, would likely not air on SNL today. However, the legendary Chris Farley shines as a very confused American contestant on a baffling Japanese game show. I'm sorry, I don't speak Japanese. As the show progresses, it becomes clear that the stakes are uproariously higher than the American had anticipated. Playing against expectations, Farley manages to beat out the Japanese players, although the result is not exactly what he would have hoped for. It's one of the oldest sketches to appear on this list, but that's to its credit, since it's managed to endure since the mid-90s. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Okay, Tina. Which one is the new cast member, and which one's in Arcade Fire? Here's your first question. What is Burn Notice? <laughs> and a chance to go head-to-head -head with the bookworm. Hello, idiots. Number one, Celebrity Jeopardy. Welcome to Celebrity Jeopardy. Celebrity Jeopardy is not only SNL's best game show parody, it's one of the series' most famous recurring sketches, and rightly so. Like Celebrity Family Feud, it's brought about some of the show's best celebrity impersonations, none better than Daryl Hammond's renowned and antagonizing Sean Connery, and Will Ferrell's exasperated Alex Trebek. 
Let's just go with letters or numbers for 200. The unbelievable idiocy of the celebrities always manages to surprise with each iteration, never failing to please the audience. This sketch was followed by a spiritual successor, Black Jeopardy, which is an excellent staple of the more recent seasons. But after all this time, one question is still unanswered. What exactly are potent potables? And the categories are potent potables. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.